Uh, hello, everyone. Hope you are all doing well. Uh, welcome to another uh, session on the release rollout of Altair's uh, Motion Solutions. Uh, I'll be presenting uh, on behalf of the Motion team. Uh, I'll be presenting what's new in Motion View and Motion Sol, uh, followed by Scott, uh, who will present updates on Inspire Motion uh, after my session. Um, to begin with, uh, for those uninitiated into our uh, altered motion capabilities, a quick overview. Our solution is available in both uh, Hyperworks and Inspire platforms. Um, using these, uh, one can assemble a multi-body model, uh, either in Motion View, uh, which is in Hyperworks, uh, or in Inspire, solve using Motion Solve, uh, post-process the results, and uh, optimize uh, either use a native optimization capability in Motion Solve or uh, use uh, HyperStudy. Uh, with Altair's multi-body solutions, uh, one can study kinematics and dynamics of a mechanical system, uh, run statics or quasi-statics, conduct durability or NVH studies. Uh, you can also solve some multi-physics multi problems uh, through interfacing with uh, some of the Altair's own products such as Activate for controls, uh, EDEM for particle simulations, OptiStruct uh, as well as uh, AccuSol uh, for uh, CFT. Now, uh, coming to the main agenda of this session today, uh, I'll present the motion solve updates, uh, which includes uh, the UI, uh, which is uh, motion view. So in 2022.1, uh, these are the major highlights. Um, we are happy to announce the release of the flexible body contacts in motion solve. With our ground vehicles or automotive solutions, uh, there are new capabilities. Um, as motion view is transitioning to a newer interface, there are improvements to that interface which has been in beta. So there's a new run workflow as well as entity editors uh, for several different entities and some other uh, generic uh, improvements. So the feature that uh, many of us have been waiting for is finally available. Uh, that is the ability for flexible bodies to be in contact. From this release, uh, it is possible to define and solve contact between a flex body or another rigid or a flex body. Uh, of course, the advantage is the model uh, will have a better fidelity. You can get more accurate uh, deformation and results due to uh, the contacts uh, factored in uh, with the flex, flexing uh, body. This feature is available in both Motion View as well as Inspire Motion. And Scott will talk about uh, how it comes in Inspire Motion later during this session. On, on the Motion View side, uh, the defining contact is not different than the rigid contacts. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, the contacts earlier, that's already available with rigid contacts. Uh, the method and the parameters are all the same. Uh, there are some extra capabilities, though. Um, that is uh, mainly to enhance the flex bodies so that it is uh, conducive for contact. Um, so there is a, a capability in flex prep to enhance the modes which can be based on some predicted contact loads or uh, a certain uh, rigid connections. Uh, uh, RB to spiders that you have in the model can be converted. Uh, the modes to be, can be added such that that area could come in contact. And I'll elaborate this process uh, in further detail. So let's take a disc. This is a disc break example. Um, we start with a regular uh, flex body. Uh, this is uh, a standard flex body that you create uh, pretty much used to uh, many of us. Um, there are certain number of modes uh, with this flex body. Uh, next, um, you define contact. 
uh, in motion view. Uh, this is uh, a pretty standard panel that we are familiar with. Um, the panel will identify that there is a flex uh, attached to this body and you can define contact with other, other bodies. Now, um, in the flexible body panel, uh, there is an additional tab called contact prediction. Here, uh, one can provide a file, a load set file, which will help the solver to write out the contact loads. Um, you can also provide some maximum load sets, um, number of load sets to be considered. For each load set, there is a mode shape that gets added. Uh, however, a zero uh, value, uh, which is default, uh, is a good. Uh, the solver will, uh, in, in case it is zero, the solver will automatically calculate uh, the right number of load sets needed. Once uh, the model is set up, uh, we submit uh, to the solver. Uh, you can solve it and it writes out the predicted loads where the contacts are happening into the load set file. In the next step, uh, we use the flex prep again. Um, and this is to enhance the flex body. Uh, there is a new CMS type. Uh, called Craig Chang contact or CCC. This method, uh, in addition to the regular modes, uh, can factor in the contact loads and uh, use that to add more mode shapes uh, to the flex body. Uh, also, um, you could provide uh, uh, nodes, node numbers where there are rigid uh, spiders. These are the independent uh, nodes of the rigid spider. Uh, so this process will release the degree of freedom uh, in that region and add more shapes to in those regions so that that region can also come in contact. Once we uh, um, that is done, so you have a new flex body. Uh, here you can observe that these are additional modes wherever the contacts were earlier identified, as well as the rigid regions, they have uh, additional modes. And once you replace, uh, now you can replace the flex body uh, H3D with the new enhanced uh, flex body. Uh, you, you would observe a much more better results uh, with uh, compared to the previous uh, runs in the region of uh, contact. So this is a typical uh, process uh, that you would exercise through motion view. Um, a similar process runs in Inspire Motion also, but there is some kind of automation which Scott will uh, elaborate uh, during his session. Next content in this release uh, is the new uh, run workflow. Uh, in the new interface. This is the first release of this workflow, which integrates post-processing uh, within Motion View. Uh, the new workflow provides tracking the solver from Motion View along with the animation. It keeps track of the history of runs uh, and the results can be accessible uh, from the history. Uh, allow sequential runs uh, when model has more than one analysis. It also offers the traditional way of solving, which we have been used to uh, by exporting the solver deck and running as a separate uh, process. Uh, we call it an offline run. So let's walk through uh, this process um, using this wheel loader example. Uh, in the analyze ribbon, uh, if there's a run uh, settings, uh, you can bring up the run settings uh, dialog. Uh, we provide a run name. And uh, there's an advanced settings which uh, tablets all the simulation settings and output options. Uh, there is a handy search bar uh, to look up for a setting. And uh, the, so you can search for a particular uh, attribute in the simulation settings. And uh, you can set that. Next, once you close, you can hit run. 
now when you uh, click run uh, motion view starts the communication with the solver uh, this model as contacts so it takes a while to start um, uh, there is also a quick start button here um, if the if your settings are all set uh, you can just hit the quick start but you you can see the progress uh, through animation that's happening live also there's a run status dialog that keeps track of uh, the simulation uh, also notice there is a simulation time that is being uh, shown in the status bar once the run is over uh, the results can be loaded in hyperview or plotted in hypergraph or we can you can just close this dialog um, and view the animation uh, in motion view itself. The model is now in the post context, so you can hit on the animation toolbar to animate uh, the result. Uh, you can now then also look at the run history. Uh, there's a calendar icon which brings the run history and uh, you can uh, either load the model from here or even animate and plot the results uh, in hyperview um, yeah so you can uh, hit animate and it loads the results in hyperview um, which in a separate page There is also uh, an offline method of uh, solving, which is our classical way. Uh, so there's a checkbox that you say run offline and run, and this executes the solver uh, in a separate process uh, that we are familiar with. Once uh, the run is over, again, the results uh, can be accessed uh, from the run history dialog. The next uh, content uh, are the entity editors. Um, in 2022 version, we had a few entity editors. Now more entities have uh, editors, which is a browse, browser style property sheet that are natural UI for editing properties in the new interface. These entity editors would replace the panels. Um, so panels will be removed uh, by version 2023. The entity editors contain all properties for that entity. They would allow multi editing. That means one can select multiple entities and edit the common properties in one, uh, one instance. The editor also displays uh, units of the properties uh, wherever uh, appropriate. So right now, most of the commonly used entities have editors. Um, there are a few other entities which will also get an editor uh, in the upcoming releases and then the panel uh, will go away. A few other uh, minor improvements. Um, there is an option to convert existing points to have their definition in relate to a marker. So if you need to make the points follow a markers position and orientation, uh, you select these points right click and use these options so the points will be redefined using the lock underscore l underscore two function and thereby defining uh, those points in the reference marker so when the marker is moved the points also move along with them which uh, you know if the marker is uh, used as a variable in an optimization your model is kind of parameterized to that marker Another uh, improvement uh, which goes a long way working with optimization of models with flex bodies is the ability to parameterize a point with respect to a node. 
this new function uh, there is a new function available called get node coordinates this function can be used to locate a point on a node so that when there is an update to a flex body uh, where the node has moved the point also follows the node uh, location next uh, motion solve update uh, motion solve now supports writing grid point stresses in the flex body to the results uh, this is useful for certain downstream analysis such as fatigue for example where uh, the grid point stresses are needed so uh, the gp stress should be requested in optistruct uh, during the cms flex body generation and they should be available in the flex h3d um, next i'll present what's new in our ground vehicles uh, solutions uh, for 2022.1 a new slalom event is now available under the vehicle events uh, adding on to an already available long list of full vehicle events the event is available uh, for the four wheelers uh, the two wheelers and the truck library uh, it comes uh, with an automated uh, report the two wheeler library uh, now adds a uh, cvt transmission or uh, what's called as continuously variable transmission uh, for scooter models the uh, this powertrain is listed uh, under the powertrain as ic engine powertrain with cvt uh, this is an analytical model in the form of a control uh, state equation Another update to the two wheelers library is the ability to include uh, aerodynamic forces uh, to the vehicle. The aerodynamic coefficients are provided in a team orbit file uh, .aae. So these capabilities uh, kind of add more fidelity to uh, your model. There's an update uh, to the events. Uh, in the in the full vehicle it is now possible to control the steering uh, using torque this option is available in the driver tab uh, of the event editor and it produces a smoother torque characteristics for events uh, where the path is not uh, changing uh, quite frequently the tire soft soil model has been extended uh, to include obstacles um, nine different types of obstacles can be included so this offers a more efficient way of solving uneven compressible surfaces uh, which are good for uh, initial design studies for such events um, the various control blocks uh, in in our vehicle libraries that are represented by fmus um, they have been enhanced to have uh, design parameters uh, which are uh, relevant uh, earlier we used to see a lot of uh, parameters here which was not easy to identify and now this makes much more uh, easier uh, to work with uh, finally a, a tutorial tutorial is now available for adding altered driver uh, in a, a generic model or a user uh, defined model or a user created model so that uh, concludes the motion view uh, updates um, uh, to summarize uh, the 2022.1 comes with new uh, flex contacts uh, it expands our automotive solution capabilities uh, with new events and features uh, which helps to increase the model fidelity. So we continue with the transition of motion view uh, to the new interface with uh, entity editors and integrated solve and post-processing. I now hand over to Scott uh, for Inspire uh, Motion Updates. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Profil. Hello, everybody. Uh, here to discuss the really, uh, new features and enhancements in Inspire Motion 22. Point one. Uh, so at, in a summary here, uh, as Profil alluded to, we have flex body contact that was introduced into both products simultaneously. So I'll just recap uh, just to show you basically how to access that inside of Inspire. We have a new tool called the Topology Explorer, 
allowing you to navigate through the model, look at connections. We have a part trace feature where we can create geometry from the sweep uh, of motion uh, parts. And then we've done some expansion in terms of state dependent inputs, which this was uh, came out in our last release where we can uh, um, drive uh, inputs uh, as a function of certain uh, entity outputs or characteristics. So I'll explain that more. <clears throat> we also have uh, a new feature here where we can open an Inspire Motion model directly in Motion View. Previously, it's an experimental feature, but we've now unlocked that as a, a formal release feature. We also have a new feature here, Export to NFX. This also was an experimental feature. It now makes its way as a, a formal feature in the software. And then we had some other enhancements and improvements listed here that uh, I'll discuss. So first we had flex body contact, which Profil explained um, was introduced into uh, Motion Solve, which is now uh, feeding both uh, Inspire Motion and Motion View. And we've given it basically, it's the same functionality, but the approach is a little bit different because of the Inspire domain that we're in. And for there's there's two types of contact methods we're basically referring to. Um, these are the enhanced methods that Profil alluded to where we can calculate additional mode shapes of the CMS flex body that are based on uh, uh, events in the model, such as contact events and how uh, joints are connected and things like that. So it really takes flex bodies to the next level to give accurate results um, at these uh, different contacting interfaces. The first one, Flex uh, Contact Plus, uh, this is where it's doing sort of a pre predictive analysis to determine additional mode shapes due to the contact behavior. Um, and so we have an option here under the run settings and then under the contact section where you can turn this on right here. Um, and so that's that's pretty much it. There's no uh, extended workflow. Obviously, um, we don't have access to the FEM file and things like that. So things are a little more closed off here than they are in motion view. But this will give you uh, Flex Contact Plus for any uh, contacts, general contacts you have in your model between parts and give you enhanced uh, results at those interfaces. Here's a nice uh, example of on the left using traditional Flex Contact and then on the right with Flex Contact Plus. We also have flex contact for joints. This isn't an official feature name. It's more of a reference of the methodology being used um, because I think it is important we point out that, um, you know, Altair Inspire and Motion Solve are using a very unique process to generate these enhanced mode shapes. So what this does is if you have joints in the model, you can change the joint type. For example, this is a ball and socket. Well, you can change the joint type from the dropdown we have a new joint type called contact, and this is not exactly the same as a general part to part contact. It takes a joint and uh, it does calculates additional enhanced modes based on the joint information and then adds those basically to the CMS. So again, you're getting enhanced mode shapes for the flex body analysis for joint regions like this. The requirement here is that you do have geometry in place. Uh, to be able to utilize this feature. We also have a new feature called the Topology Explorer. So this allows us to graphically navigate the model and look at uh, different connections. So we can filter different entity types in here, and then you can, uh, we also have color coding in here to show you if it's a rigid group, ground part, things like that. So you can just start clicking on the model, and as you click the parts, uh, the different associated entities will highlight. You can also click springs and actuators and things like that uh, to see the structure of the model. So this is a great debugging tool, especially for large models when uh, you're trying to uh, understand how things are connected, where there are joints and things like that. You can also access this by right clicking on different features in the browser. So you could right click on a joint, a part, and there's an option in the flyout menu for Motion Topology Explorer. We also have a new feature called Part Trace. So this has been requested for quite a while now by customers, and that is the ability to trace the sweep of a part through its range of motion. So what we do here is we've 
introduced into this dialogue the ability to maybe basically set the range of motion you want to look at, and then you can control both the uh, quality of the interpolation. So there's an interpolation that's taking place between the frames. This is nice because you don't need a lot of frames in the motion analysis to generate a good quality sweep. The interpolation will uh, help account for that automatically. And then the voxel size is just improving the quality uh, of the mesh, the, the uh, fit in there. And then there's different operations. So because you've selected two parts, you can choose to do a Boolean operation like this subtract right here. And uh, you can see now we have a, a clearance that was generated in this part. Okay, uh, this was just a slide showing the, uh, the use of that. We've also expanded the support of state dependent inputs. Springs and dampers and joints can now be used as state dependent inputs. So a good example of this is this crank piston, uh, which the force on that piston is a function of the angular displacement of the joint. And so now we can, uh, you have more flexibility in defining these, uh, these interrelationships in your model. Along the same, whoops, I'm sorry, I thought that was coming in the next slide. Um, we have a feature now where we can open the Inspire Motion model directly inside of Motion View. This was experimental before. Uh, now it's a formal release feature, and you can access it by going to the Run settings and then clicking on Export. Previously, when you clicked Export, you just saw a dropdown of different units uh, where you were prepping to export a Motion Solve file. Uh, now you have motion view and motion solve. If I click motion solve, I'll have the ability to set the units and also export a .py file. Also, formally, another uh, experimental feature is export to NanoFluidX. So we have a customer uh, using this very diligently has helped us kind of drive the needs for this tool. And um, there are certain things in uh, NanoFluidX that where the motion, there's, there's complex motion. Uh, so for example, on a planetary gear system, the planet gears are moving different at a different angular velocity than the carrier. So the customer wanted the ability to be able to specify individual reference frames for each of those. So we've, uh, placed this table in here where we can now select a system, an Inspire system that is, and use that as a reference for the uh, for the output. We also have graphic sizing for motors and actuators. So now we can click um, a glyph on the motor or actuator and we can uh, resize it. And there's two different methods based on uh, whether it's a feature based uh, entity or a a whole based entity, but you can see you can drag these and sometimes uh, the the entities were sized automatically depending on the features that were selected and uh, sometimes the motors and actuators could be larger than some of the geometry and so it wasn't very visually appealing. So now you have the ability to just quickly scale it uh, so it's more appropriate to the uh, view of the model. We also have plot zooming. So now we can box select an area on a plot and just zoom right in to a particular point. Um, we still have the ability to say hold the control key, roll the scroll button, pan around the plots, uh, but this gives us a more direct way to quickly zoom in on a specific area. And we can do this in the plot manager or on any call out or pop out plot. We also now provide rigid group properties uh, for rigid groups. There's both a table and uh, well, there was a table previously, but now we've introduced these additional properties in here. And we also, if you click on a rigid group, display the properties like you see here in the property editor. Variable object highlighting. So this goes to the state dependent inputs. This is where we're saying in this image up on the top right, maybe the motor is dependent on the linear displacement of this system. Or down here, the force on the piston is a function of the angular displacement of the joint. When you are setting up a state dependent input, we now highlight the uh, independent object uh, in red. 
So you can clearly see which one is uh, which one has been chosen. Previously, we did not do that. Okay, and that is the end of uh, the new features and enhancements for Inspire Motion 2022.1.